got to worry about your training. Make sure you're ready. You can be a good fighter, but you've got to have a lot of balls to do bare knuckle. I'm not going to retire. The only time when I'm going to retire is when I'm dead. Okay, break, 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 break. You're here for a fight, Jacko. A club, lads. Let's go. Whoa. Bare knuckle boxing spans back to the 17th century. It is now a very fast growing sport within the UK, attracting men from all walks of life. Anyone who has got the guts, determination and honour can now step up to the mark. Welcome to the UK's very own Fight Club. Coming up, Aaron the Butcher takes on Jacko the Bullet Fist Jackson. But will his fists be firing blanks? Yeah, come on, we've got to see some moves, come on. Just outside picturesque Oxford lies the small town of Blackbird Lees. Back in the 90s, it was infamous for its joyriding, which came to a head in 91 when the police cracked down and sparked a mini riot involving 150 youths. When it comes to trouble, this town has certainly earned its place on the map. Aaron is one of the UK's most promising up-and-coming bare-knuckle fighters. During his downtime, he takes time out to bulk up, but when he gets a call to fight, he shreds off any excess pounds. Yeah, so um, basically where I'm from, it's Black Belize, Oxford. It's an estate. Some people, if you know it, is like back in the day for joyriding. Um, nowadays it ain't like that, you still get some people that um, go around and nick cars but more fighting and stabbing, you've got all the gangs around Black Blues. I, I pulled out of all that stuff, I've been jailed quite a few times fighting, um, car crime, you name it, I've done it but <clears throat> since I've started taking up boxing and bare knuckle it's calmed me down a lot. Um, I was doing mixed martial arts, but there's more money in the bare knuckle world. I've got more people who's more interested in me, want to see me more fight. So that's why I took up. I'm not you know, worried about who I'm fighting, where I'm fighting, in front of who. It really matters as long as I've got people behind me, my family, my friends, you know what I mean, that care about me. That's what I care about at the end of the day. I train hard and then it pays off. Funny, go. One, two. Ropes, let's go. Oh, legs lower, man. Lower. Sit. Faster, let's go. To be physically fit is important to me because. I've always kept myself in a in a fit state, and now I'm training for bare knuckle, mixed martial arts. I'm, you know what I mean. I'm flat out training, boxing, weights, running, hill sprints, eating well, I'm dieting. I'm helping other people out. So at the end of the day, it's really a big thing in my life, and I think it'll stay with me for the rest of my life. Go okay, tired now. Body. Go, 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 go. My family and friends think about it. Uh, my mum loves it. She's Irish. My girlfriend at the moment has been feeding me food for my fights and looking after me. My mate, my coaches, you know what I mean? They're all, they're all here to support me and they're all backing me 100%. We're going to see uh, my missus, my wife. My little red air troll, Taja. 
First time you've been here since October. I know. Don't want to come back either. Okay. Carry on with your fucking attitude. How did it feel to see me today, Tiger? Fucking shit to as usual. <laughs> How do you feel about Aaron fighting? Is he good or bad? Bad. Don't like it. I'll get nervous. I'll get sick. It makes me really ill. I can't eat for hours. <laughs> we don't talk in the car. <laughs> and then we get stressed with each other. Then we don't talk for like an hour solidly before. Gloved was the worst. I need to fight my gloves. I don't like him fighting my gloves. He was more injured, it goes on for longer. It's like, it seems like the injuries are more internal rather than like a little cut or what he would get from bare knuckle. Um, yeah, the gloved fight was horrendous. He had concussion the whole night, he was like yellow. I had to sit up and watch him, take him to the hospital. Like it was horrendous and that was, that was gloved. Everyone was going, oh, this will be much easier because it's gloved. It wasn't, it was awful. There was no cuts or anything, but his face was swollen and the whole night, he was being sick, he was concussed. It was the worst I've seen him. Yeah, normally, like, you see the blood and that, and people are like, oh my God, it's awful, but it actually was a lot better than seeing him that night with the gloves. I do think knocks to the head, I've sent him a bit doolally. Um, <laughs> yeah, he's not normal. I can't, I can't say anything because I like that he's not normal, but sometimes it makes me question how many more blows is it going to take before he's completely shot away? <laughs> Sooner the better, isn't it? Yeah, get him, get him in the mental hospital quickly. <laughs> Probably shouldn't say stuff like that. Yeah, I'm going to bring you now to my school where I grew up. It's a naughty school. It's got all like metal fencing around there, you can't get out. I got sent here from getting it spelled from Wesley Green just up the road. It's an all boys school. Uh, for naughty boys, is being expelled from other schools in Oxfordshire. Um, yeah, basically, it's just a prison camp. <laughs> you can see it with the spikes on, so it says it all. <laughs> My brother used, used to get me down here and fight all the lads from the street. <laughs> so I started that was probably when I was like 11, 12, and that would be like be playing football and then they'd just get bored with all the older lads like their brothers so they'd get me fighting with their brothers and it just it just be constant. All the time I always want to fight, I've always fought since I was young and it's the thing what I love and I love fighting. What makes a good bare knuckle fighter I believe is someone with a heart. It's been bang up through the streets, them, them kind of lads who I know who's got heart and soul and they believe in fighting bare knuckle or, or as a boxer. Runcorn is an industrial town and cargo port. The town sits on the southern bank of the Mersey. Just like its neighbour Liverpool, it is plagued with violence and crime. I got into bare knuckle because I've always been an active kind of lad and I must admit when I was a younger boy my dad sort of got me into martial arts as a young lad doing karate and that and obviously he was into Bruce Lee so it was all that type of thing that sort of got me interested in bare knuckle in the end because full contact sports no matter what they are I respect all full, full contact sports no matter what they are. You know, you, you have to respect the fighting and respect the fighter as well. So. And by the way, when I'm whacking this, I imagine that I'm whacking the opponent's face with, the, with an hammer. By the way. How do I train? Well, I, I train a uh, sort of, it depends on what mood I'm in. I mean, sometimes I train harder, sometimes I train lighter. It depends, it depends who I'm fighting and how confident I feel on that person. If I think that person's an animal, then I'll train like a fucking animal, so to speak. Just a little exercise that I do just for my legs. <laughs> Usually I'm better than this. Um, I do hammer tyre training, tyre flipping, uh, heavy bag work, weight training, you know, you name it, you know, pretty much everything really that I can possibly do. And if it was legal, I'd be doing this to him. <laughs> My family and friends sort of 
you know, they back me all the way. And my missus gets concerned about it a little bit, you know, worries about me getting a punch and something happening. But, you know, I suppose at the end of the day, they're all behind me. And without them and without my wife behind me, I couldn't do it. So that's how it is for me. Sometimes when I'm working out, I just like to get my daughter and my kids involved. Come here, come here. Hold the pad for your dad then. Oh. When a face-off happens, it depends, you know, he's either going to be an ugly fucker, so I'm thinking, yo, an ugly bastard, or I'm thinking he's, you know, one tough-looking fella and I'm just going to have to plant one as quick as possible on his chin. You know, it, it depends, it varies, you know, it varies. You know, and some of them guys are a bit too short, I think, oh, he's a bit fucking short, you know, it depends. <laughs> depends what's in front of you, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, that's it, I was just going a bit light today because I've got a fight soon, but believe me, you better be ready for me. I really, really think about seriously hurting him. I had the fight the other day, it got cancelled. All I wanted to do was smash his face in. Coming up, will the butcher's dominating presence be too much for the Runcorn bullet? When the ref says fight, I'm sort of thinking, you know, I just want to go out there and have a good fight and have a good set two and a good toe-to-toe -to -toe fight with whoever I'm fighting and that's it. That's all that matters to me. I mean, can't you do that digitised shit? Well, I'll throw some punches at him. If you put some <laughs> fucking computer shit in him, we'll just say we had a fight and that and I'll just say, you know what I mean? I don't what... fucking mind that. If a person who I'm fighting is cocky, I don't listen to him. It's kids talking it. Let, it, let us fight in the ring. Coming up, will the bullet fist be firing blanks? He's not fucking, fucking throwing, I'm come not going. Closer to me well, then. If my opponent's cocky to me and I'm knocking down, I think, yeah, take that, you know, ha, you know, that's on you, dickhead, kind of thing, you know. So why not? When I get the phone call, I get uh, excited, I get a buzz. I, I love it, it sort of like, I don't know, it sort of makes sense to me. It's like something I want to do, so I, I sort of get excited. You know what I mean? It's like a feeling. It's hard to explain. It's, but it's a good one. I don't really mind if I know who I'm fighting at the end of the day. It is good to know because if they've had a couple of more fights than you can watch their fights, study them a bit. But at the end of the day, all it takes is a shot in the jaw, and you know what I mean. It's nice, uh, nice day for the drive, isn't it? If only I was only going here to write poetry. Whoa, hey. Okay. Be really good. It sort of softens you, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> this one has start painting. This one has start painting and shit. You know what I mean? Be one with, na with nature, you know, as you say. Isn't it? <laughs> My technique is always probably being a brawler from street fighting, but lately I've been doing a lot of boxing and trying to get more technical. In my style. What's that fucking program with Anna Rice? In the helicopter. And you're like going around places to find clues and shit. That's what it feels like, innit? <laughs> innit though? <laughs> oh, here we go. Go in. Boom, boom. Let's get, let's get it on already. After hours of driving, both opponents finally get to the fighting ground. When I'm walking up to the fight, in my head, um, I don't know what I'm really thinking. I've got mixed emotions. I think about the people that's watching me, myself, my win, my reputation. That's it really at the end of the day. As long as I go there and I've got heart and I know what I'm up to, and my head's switched on. It don't really matter who I'm fighting. It's just some, a sport of what I love. And um, at the end of the day, a win's a win, a loss is a loss, but you always li live with a loss. When I'm walking up to the fight, I, I sort of, um, I just picture the fight being a good fight, you know, and not looking fucking stupid and just doing what I've been training to do, you know, pretty much that's it. You know, being happy with my performance, fuck their performance, you know, it's about my performance that counts. You know, yeah, I respect the bastards, but, you know, only, only that much. <laughs> I respect myself more. I'll just push myself. You know, because you've got no other choice. If you agree to fight, you agree to fight. You know, whether you're scared or not, you know, you're not going to tell nobody, are you? You're just going to go and fucking get on with it and just have a good tear up and then hope for the best. And that's all you can really do, you know. Tell us what we're doing. Three two minute rounds, okay? Keep it clean. You know the rules, okay? No elbows, nothing like that there. So, uh, you both ready? 
Okay, I want you both knuckle up and be friends after, okay? That's what it's all about, okay? I know it sounds fucking stupid, but I really do need a piss. <laughs> <laughs> well, when you gotta go, you gotta go. Let's hope he's coming back. <laughs> okay, keep it nice and clean. No elbows, no headbutts, no biting, no nothing like that there whatsoever, okay? Just punching only, all right? So you, you both ready? Yeah. yeah. Okay, I want you to be friends after, okay? Okay, get yourself ready. Knuckle up. And fight. Move this way. Okay, let's go. Knuckle up. Time! Aaron is clearly getting frustrated with Jacko and the lack of will to fight. But Jacko ignores the advice from his corner men and turns to his partner. Time. Okay, lads, you ready to fight? Okay, we come shield in. Okay, knuckles up, lad. Okay, let's go. Let's start to see some action, boys. Come on, man. Fuck's sake. I agree, but <laughs> it was what it was. Get back over here. Okay, let's go. Come on then, guys, let's see some action now. Watch out for the camera, lads, watch out. Lads, get back over here. You're a fucking point, step up and start throwing some punches. Yeah, come on, we got to see some moves, come on. Well, if he's not throwing, if he's not fucking throwing, I'm come not throwing. Come closer to me, well, then. then. You, you're here for a fight, Jacko. Jacko, you're here for a fight. Yeah, we are. Off I'm not nobbing off of you. He just wants to eat. You. I you're what you're you're saying, but if you're not going to throw me out of my tactic and you have yours, if we're not going to agree on it, then fuck the fight. Well, no, here, hold on, hold on, dads. Here, hey, listen to me. Listen to me. Yeah, just listen to me. Both of you, listen. Both shut up and listen to me. Hey, listen to me. Come over here. Away from your missus. No disrespect. This is a gentleman's sport, and this is where it's going to be fucking kept, right? I know you want to fight. You're a very good stalker, and, and you, 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 you want to back. Yeah, I know that. I know that. But there's a but, right? You come here for a fight, so let's get the fucking thing on, all right? And be be friends after, okay? I mean, can't you do that digitised shit? Well, I'll throw some punches at him. You put some <laughs> fucking computer shit in, and we'll just say we had a fight and that, and I'll just say, you know what I mean? I don't it fucking mind that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, come on, boys, let's get it on, all right? Let's go. Let's make a little bit of a ring, okay? Keep Jacko in. Can you step in a bit closer, lads? Keep him inside the ring, it's big enough. Oh, I'm just not feeling it at the moment, that's all. Okay, right, listen, try and keep out. Jacko, what's up, mate? Oh, I'm be. I've got more going lay into him. So, you know, I'm just not feeling that shit. I'm not it's really. It's not, it's the audience. And it's Jacko. silent, it's just the atmosphere. Yeah, it's not feeling it. It's tired for some reason. I came and I was all good intentions, but I'm just not feeling it. The atmosphere. Shit. I can't help that, Jacko. Can we not, no, can we not all shout and scream? You know, you're, not, you're not here to come and uh, uh, like spectate a fight. We're here to get yeah. two fighters fighting. Yeah. Yeah. not flat. Well, it's this not is this. Well. this, this like, the, 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 fighters, so yeah, it is. Feel. Well, you've got to get in there, Jacko. Okay. Listen, no one's making you fight. 
Well, get in the, get, you need to get in the zone, right? You need to get in the zone. You're here for a fight, right? If you I want, was. if you <laughs> listen, listen, Jacko. If you want to fight, we'll get the fight on. If you don't, then, then listen. No one's making it do this. No, I know, right? I know, I know. I felt good before. Jacko, yeah, no, no I respect. Felt, I love you, bro. Yeah, you know what I mean? But let me good. tell you something, Jacko. Cut the shit. It's you, mate. Word gets out there that you fucking bottled it. I'm telling you, people will be fucking laughing. Every I always you. assume that bottling was like not turning up at all. You nah, know, nah, nah, nah. Like, nah, like, nah. I don't know. It's like you don't have nah. a choice when you're taking a shit. Nah. You know, whatever's coming out of your ass, you just have to do nah. it, don't you? And it's, you know, I just thought I've, I've come here. I don't understand if I've not stood in front of him, like. But Jacko, Jacko, you haven't stood. You, 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 what, what you're trying to do, you're trying to justify yourself. It's not working, but. <laughs> If you, if you, listen, listen, because I know your lady would be looking at you in a different light. Yeah. Do you know? We, we, yeah. You know, she'd be looking at you in a different light, and that's entirely up to you if you can live with that. I, I couldn't. I couldn't. And every time you're making love to your woman, you'll be wondering what, what she's thinking about you. She loves you the bits. She loves you the bits, but she will. No, no question about it. I'm telling you now, she'd be looking at you in a different light. It would have been better that you didn't bring your lady here today. That way, there, she wouldn't have known what's going on. You mate, I'll tell you what, I'm telling you something now, and I'm telling you this is from a fight spirit and, and a friend. Jacko, I'm telling you, this day is going to haunt you for the rest of your fucking life. If you don't give it one more round, this, this day is going to haunt you big time. I'm and you, and you, will not feel like, you will not feel like the man. The man, the man yeah. that you, you, think, you thought you were, you are not. Yeah. I mean, sometimes, I suppose, it's just the, way it, the way it is sometimes, I think. Okay. You don't want to fight? Um, not now, no. Well, it's not, not now, no. If, if, it, if it's not now, no, that means never. Because I'll tell you what, Jacko, no, no one on the circuit is going to touch you. you listen, you know, your, your, your life's going to change. Mean, well, if you don't want to, you better go and have a chat with him. Would well, you want to mention to him briefly then, and then I'll just get my T-shirt on, and then I'll talk to him. Yeah, I'll go and have a quiet word. Get your shirt on. He's bored him. That's a shame. But before anyone could speak to Jacko, he left the arena without even shaking hands with his opponents. Where's he going? Turned up today to a fight, and he kept running away from me like a little pussy what he is. His missus is coaching him. That says something at the end of the day. I've got my coaches here, I've got my missus here, my missus steps back, I'm not big headed, I'm not the hardest. At the end of the day, he shouldn't be allowed to fight again at bare knuckle because he's putting down the sport. A good bare knuckle fighter is a person that's tough, um, that's prepared to push himself and, I don't know, prepared to not be scared. You know, you've just got to push yourself and go for it, really, you know. Because, you know, how are you going to win if you're, if you're scared? And, you know, I just don't believe in cowarding out like that, you know, if I'm, I'm going to fight, I'll fucking fight, so that's the way it is. Coming up, two fighters in their prime come head to head. A brutal exchange of punches can only lead to one thing, as a seasoned pro takes on a worthy opponent. When the ref says fight, I don't say nothing. Nothing goes from my head until the ref says break. I break, he says fight, I fight again until he says stop. Coming up, Tony the Pancho comes head to head with the cyborg. I don't mind who I fight, I don't care who he is, I don't care about his stats, how big he is, what weight he is. If he wants it, I'll fight him. After surviving a traumatic childhood in care homes and then years of sleeping rough anywhere he could find, including woods and even graveyards, Matthew has begun to put his life back together and has recently left the hostel for a place he can finally call home. Yeah, hey, guys, I'm coming in to my new abode. Thank you. Yeah, I'm just doing it up at the moment. So I've just plastered on the walls and stuff, so I've only just moved in. I'm going to be doing this up. So welcome to my fighter's conclave abode. Yeah, this is Molly. Molly was from the M25 hostel, and I took her with me because she uh, seemed to attract her to me and I look after her. So this is mine now. You, usually I... I've got with my own spit roast machine. Usually I've used my um, chickens and that kind of stuff on there. Get chicken dinners. Also got some more stuff to do with uh, steaks and stuff like that. Everything all my own, my own fridge, my own freezer, my own brand new cooker and everything. Everything's sorted, ready for my work. And the food kitchen. 
So I'm uh, my food stuff, the protein shakes. I've kind of still got some protein shakes in my fridge as well. The protein shakes in my fridge. Ready to go to the gym to work out, that kind of thing. So that's uh, some of the stuff that I eat. Ready to train. This is my trophy that I won last night for a fight of the night award for my fight last night. It's quite nice. Hello, Hi, Bridget. Um, I've got a, a, good, a group of friends here who are having me filming and uh, I'd like to know what you think about bare fighting and my, my career. I think it's absolutely brilliant. Sometimes when, when I see Matt go out, he walks out normal, but when he comes back in, his face is all bruised and everything, and it's totally different. <laughs> Am I good looking then still? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Oh, yeah. <laughs> As I say, you can lick the wounds and heal them. Oh, yeah, I've still got what it takes. Yeah, well, I'm just going to my local corner shop where Steve, who runs it, he uh, helps out with um, Bisping's old trainer, uh, Michael Bisping, was of the UFC. And. Uh, I'm picking his brains to try and find out more training places and see if we can get some more training in the future. Nothing certain yet, it's still in the pipeline, but uh, I'll just keep on trying to find places and for the future where I can train and get better. From what I know I'm at, and what I've seen I'm at, and what results he keeps coming back at, you can't train certain things in fighting because the biggest part on it's here. I think that's right, isn't yeah, it, Mark? It's right, what's yeah. within. You can train and train and train, providing you are fit, it's what's inside you, it's your heart. Do you think Matt's got a good heart? He's got a big heart, yes. He's got a perfect heart. And uh, he's, a, he's a good person. Will you be happy for Steve to train you? Absolutely, I, I, I need all the training I can get and I'd be honoured to be trained but with Steve and the people he knows, the trainers he knows, I'm all well up for it, mega big time. Yeah. Thanks mate. Thanks mate, see you later. See you. Eleven and a half years ago, went in for a simple routine operation, 15 minutes, and the anaesthetist got it all wrong. <laughs> Now I suffer from two syndromes at the same time when I fight. But I don't allow it to stop me. I keep going, going, keep on trying, keep on training. And BKB is, is my greatest passion. I love barnacle pit fighting the most. It's just something that is so kind of primal, I suppose, that I don't mind who I fight. I fight anyone, anywhere in its eyes. So um, I don't really mind of who the opponent is as long as I get to enough time to train before the fight. Mansfield is a market town in Nottinghamshire, once famous for its coal mines and hardened pitmen it's no wonder the next generation has inherited some of their traits. Hi. Yes. Tony shares his life with his new girlfriend, Nikki, and is surrounded by friends he has known since childhood. Oh. Hello. <laughs> I know you're joking. If somebody's going to do it, then why bother? Mm. That is a good point. Sometimes I'm not in any weeks and hours. What do you think about Tony doing BKB? I think it's good. Yeah, I like it. It makes him happy. Gets the biggest smile when I talk about it, so I do not like it. Mm. Do you ever worry about him? Uh, not really, because I know he can handle himself. I've seen, I've seen YouTube clips. He looks. I haven't seen any. Very handy. Mm. Nice. Everyone needs a hobby. Some people are a little strangers than others. You have to do that. Yeah, turn up, do it. It's weird because you're not scared of being it. That's different. So people will say, "Oh, I'm going to put his head through the floor and stamp all over him and kick fuck out of him." And, Nah, like I said last time, it's just a fight, isn't it? You could have a fight walking out here. You could. It's just, I'm not scared of being it. That's different. It sounds up, I prefer to get it first and then do it, but no, no style. 
um, Jiu Jitsu fighter, so Bernard Boxing is totally the opposite. So it's just, no, I'm not a fighter, not a brawler. I'm just what you see is what you get. I just like scrap. If there's any trouble kick off around here, Tony will be under the table. That's it. <laughs> Bring someone else. I'm not very good. Fucking <laughs> typical. Right, me and Harry are off to Newton now where I grew up. Show you around when I was little or younger. This <laughs> <laughs> is Aylesford Way, we had my first fight. I'm going to get down here now, show you where I got the kick in. <laughs> I am, and uh, let you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm messaging uh, this woman, and. Well, this guy liked her. He got a bit ropey, kept messaging me, and saying he's going to kick me head in. He's a lot older than me, so I thought, young lad, fit. On the steroids and the stuff, so I thought, yeah, I can give him a fucking good ride in. And it is just here where I met him. And yeah, he kicked barrels out of me. He did. Him and his mate kicked fuck out of me. And I found out it was his daughter, not his oh, right. girlfriend. So yeah, he went happy and he put me in my place, shut me up. And then I found out it was an old ex pit man. So yeah. A bit broader than you. Did you, um, did you do anything with his daughter? No, I did I fucking get nothing out of it, nothing. Didn't even get a kiss. <laughs> Not her. No, I didn't. I still see it to this day, actually, I know, no, knocking no, about, well, and him. No. I'm a laugh and joke about well, it now. Nothing. Yeah. Nothing. Yeah, so we do talk about it now and laugh and joke about it and stuff, so. Right. But yeah, I had to pay the price and I did. I uh, left school, went to work in a little factory in a local village. Not a bad little place, just to start off with. And then I got into to spraying aircraft parts and they fell there for about four, ten years easily. And hopefully every year to pick my retirement up and get a look. I get into burn boxing for the sheer fact my boys watch it on YouTube and they don't see my boys so that's my way of communicating for them. After the fight I tell them I love them, I write the names on the wraps. That's my little thing of, that's the only reason I do it. No other reason, not for the money, not for the publicity, nothing. I don't feel so for my opponent at any time. Once that bell goes, I'm there to knock him down and to keep him down. Coming up. Two fighters in their prime come head to head. Will Tony finally be the one to stop the cyborg? Coming up, Tony Pancho Colton finally meets Matthew the Cyborg Thorne. Months of training, Tony sets off to the secret location. All that is left now is to meet his opponent, which is only a two hour drive away. When I'm called to a fight, I feel privileged and honoured that I'm able to get in that pit and do what I love doing the most, and that's fighting. Not that much about Tony, I do know he's uh, got some speed on him. Safe, my same third fight. He's had, I don't know, 16, 17 farts or whatever he's had. Yeah. And you're like, fucking hell, shit. A lot more experience than. Giving away some weight and some reach. It's going to be a tricky one. At the end of the day, you know, the outcome money is going to get knocked out, simple as that. You're going to get caught, you're going to get bruised, you're going to get knocked out. That's it. So, fat and proud syndrome, you can hear me buzzing sound, kicking in. I'm just tired out as well, it's all happening at the same time.
Despite Matthew's long-term medical condition, arriving at the fight gives him the strength to push on. When I'm walking to the ring, I feel absolutely amazing. The adrenaline is pumping and the only thing I'm thinking of is what I'm going to do to that opponent. Little boy's name's Jensen Gaylen. Love it to bits. <laughs> Gonna keep it nice and clean, okay? No biting, no head, head button, no elbows, no nothing, okay? No knees, no kicks, just boxing, okay? It's three times two minute rounds. When I say break, break. Do you hear that, Matty? Knuckle up, let's fight. Break, break, break. Okay, let's go. Stop it there. You okay? Let's go. Okay, break lads. Let's have a look at that bandage, mate. You okay? Ready to go, lads. Time. Break, break, break. Break. Let's have a look at that bandage. Come sit down a minute. Let's have a look at your hand, Tony. A brutal first round ends with both fighters feeling the onslaught of each other's attack. Bandage is all sorted. Ready to go, lads. Knuckle up. Let's fight. Break, 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 break. Knuckle up, lads.
Time. Stop it there. Well done, lads. Okay, get some nice shots. Yeah, yeah. good clean shots. Two really good shots in there, mate. <laughs> <laughs> good two shots there. Well done, lads. What's up, Tony? Tony, let's have a look at that bandage, mate. Let's take it off. After another brutal exchange, Tony is clearly in distress and has to seek medical attention. You can't carry on with the fight, his thumb looks too bad. It looks like a suspected break, so it is now down to the referee to go over and break the news to the cyborg. Matthew? Tony can't carry on, he's damaged his thumb. What? Yeah, he's damaged his thumb, so you've won, mate. Oh my god! Oh my god! Okay. Hey, well done, mate. He's okay, he's yeah, okay. he's alright. Once again, the cyborg's head has proven too much for an opponent's fist. The, the way it looks and the swelling of it, I would say it's definitely fractured. If not the thumb, definitely the wrist. Uh, oh, <laughs> well done. Well done, lads. Yeah, it will be painful. Um, it will be extremely painful at this moment. But due to the local protocols, we can't splint it. Either. We just advise them to go to uh, local A&E. He couldn't continue with a damaged hand, so also a little bit, bit uh, disappointing that he can't go to third round. But you know, it happens in this sport. But I'm big respect to my opponent, and I can't wait to. Uh, have a great smash with him again in the future, which is definitely going to be on the cards. Oh my god! Pissed off, right? But that it goes, isn't it? It's just one of the things. The smashing guy. Take note from him. Just name at spot, isn't it? Shit talk guy. Love him to bits. Love him to bits. Brilliant guy. He's probably the most respected bare knuckle fighter going. He is, and he's an amazing guy. Pleasure to fight him, actually. And I can't wait to have another one with him.